This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Vicky Norman, President of North America at 7 Digital. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by MusicGraph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or developer.musicgraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to be here this year with uh, Vicky Norman, uh, President of uh, 7 Digital North America. So hi Vicky and thanks for joining me, how's it going? It's great, it's always good to be here in Austin. Yeah, absolutely and it's good to catch up again uh, from last year. Yes. And so, you know, first of all, uh, tell me about uh, sort of the, the key developments of 7 Digital over the last uh, 12 months. What's, what's been happening? Well, we've been doing a deep dive in streaming and we have lots of new partners that are going to be rolling out this year which is really good um, we're what we're what we're starting to see is is um, more and more companies that are trying to differentiate and do new things with streaming and we're encouraging that and so we have we have two new US companies coming out in the next six months that we're really excited about and um, and we're you know we're we're continuing to push the big rock up the hill and yeah. doing music <laughs> licensing and uh, and trying to try internationally to internationally <laughs> and um, um, and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier. Yeah. But um, but that's not stopping us. Sure. And uh, yeah, of course, we're seeing uh, so many different. Uh, I've had uh, quite a few music uh, chats with uh, with lawyers uh, here at South by. I've had at least five interviews. I'm going to put together <laughs> a, a legal show. I think uh, it's going to be a two-hour special on what's happening in the U.S. legally. But uh, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty when it comes, you know, uh, um, streaming, internet radio streaming uh, versus uh, you know on, yeah. on demand a la carte. And so, uh, ha have you seen companies struggle with uh, with that? And uh, uh, are there new players that want to come into the the internet radio game that are struggling because of rates and, and uncertainty. I think there's a lot uh, around uncertainty, and and we, you know, because we sit in between the labels and the publishers and the technology companies. I think most technology companies they make decisions by putting their their costs and their business model into a spreadsheet, modeling yeah. it out, and then saying yes or no. And it's really hard. To do that right now because the the publishers pulling out of the PROs and I understand they may want more control over their catalogs but but it's really hard for people to to make a leap of faith into a music business yeah. and not really know what their underlying costs or obligations are yeah sure and last year we were talking about uh, devices and so what has been the trend uh, for for you in the last uh, year and uh, what has been the the adoption of different types of, uh, of uh, music listening around the world Definitely seeing that there's a growing amount of interest in the home and the living room, and um, and you know Sonos is, was one of the very first companies to get out with establishing a market in the home listening environment. Yeah. And now they're opening up their API as well, so that's exciting. Exactly, they're opening up their API. They're very forward thinking. It's a great product that just works out of the box. Uh, but there's also lots of new companies that are entering into this space. And I did a I did a panel on Tuesday about the return of the home stereo and, um, and so we had we had uh, Spotify on there they were with their Spotify connect yeah. uh, getting the speakers sure. to be directly integrated and pure imagination technologies which has a uh, connected speakers there's a couple of other companies that are really interested with Pono and yeah. Bose and and new entrants and I think I think it bodes really well for music because if if you have music in your home it's really natural it's something that is, you know, is an accompaniment to your life, yeah. and you generally will also have that music running on proper speakers, not just computer speakers. Yeah, and it will sound better. So we're we're excited about it, and we're hoping to be working with lots of the companies that are entering the space. Yeah, sure. And um, uh, what are you guys doing in terms of uh, audio quality? How, how do you do? You have high quality audio, and if, if this was uh, to start taking off, have you got ways to implement that? We do, and we've actually had to do quite a bit of work, both on the licensing side as well as the infrastructure side to in you know license ingest and be able to serve high quality audio and um, and we you know 
we, we're hoping that certainly with all the work that Neil Young has done to wave the flag of having music sound the way artists intended it to be sound, that that's going to help move the industry forward. And we're also hoping that, that all boats will rise a little bit and that, sure. that we start to establish some new bars for hearing hearing music in better quality sound. Yeah, yeah sure. And I, I must admit that was the biggest, one of the biggest skeptics of Bono when it was first announced. But now I understand what he's uh, planning to do with that. It makes a lot more sense, uh, the fact that he's done a Kickstarter around it. And that is really uh, just a, mostly an awareness play because uh, we know that a lot of people are not going to buy the player because you know it's, it's, uh, it's burdensome and it's a hardware standalone hardware device that most people don't want to carry around. But at least it's going to get people thinking about the fact that as he really well put out, put out, you know, in the movie industry, we're, we're used to seeing quality go up and up and up, and you know, uh, 1080i, 1080p, and and you know, 2K, 4K, and in music, we've seen a, a constant reduction in the quality of, of the sound. So that's definitely something that needs to be sorted out. Exactly, and uh, and when you think about the living room in particular, it's especially important because if you have, if you're listening to uh, a movie or you're playing a game, you're going to have that that audio quality that's really good, and it's going to be running through a five or seven point surround sound, and then what you're going to run a 64k mp3 yeah that same sound it's going to sound terrible and um and so i'm 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 an advocate i'm a backer i backed the pono project so i'm going to get my player and um and i think that i i think that where you know where we always have to draw the right line is between quality and convenience and different music for different settings yeah sure and so looking at uh, how the industry is moving forward uh, do you feel like uh you're you're having also to work more and more on the curation side. You know we're seeing that uh, that's sort of the buzzword of this uh, South by. Uh, you know it's been going for on for a while. I, I did a panel a couple of years ago that was uh, <laughs> exactly on the same subject with uh, <laughs> with uh, the VP of product of Mog of Last FM, and uh, you know it was uh, very similar players to the conversation we're having today. So what what is your stance on curation and how you, how you sorting that problem? Well, I have a background in radio, so before I started all of this digital music madness, I worked in radio for a number of years. And I do feel like we're like we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater a little bit with digital and, and old media in the sense of giving people 10 million songs and saying, great, there you go, you have access to 10, 10 million songs, enjoy that. Yeah. The average music consumer doesn't want that. They want, yeah. they, you know, they want music that's relevant to them and, and that's, the, that's always been the beauty of radio is that you decide who you want to appeal to and then you program music and make it really easy for the consumer to listen to it. And, um, and so so I think we're I think we're probably entering a new phase with digital music where it's not so much about catalog. It doesn't really matter if you have 10 million songs. It really matters if we can find the thousand that matter yeah. to you. Yeah, sure. And I had a similar conversation this morning with Eric from Pandora, and uh, she was making the same point. You know, they only have a million tracks on the catalog. Well, only, but you know, comparatively to the uh, 10, 15, 20 million of other services, that's that's not very much. And it, there are services out there, like for example, this is my jam is uh, is creating a, a collection of tracks that have been starred by people. As their jam for that time, and, and that's sort of a, it's a really good ben benchmark to at least find music that people have thought worthy enough to make their jam for that day or that week. So that's that's a really interesting uh, side to come from as well. Yeah, and I think I think music has always been tribal. Yeah, um, the people people identify with it. They want to identify with other people who like similar music, and that's you know that isn't one size fits all. And music has never really been one size fits all. So I'm I'm excited to work with some companies that are really focusing on on culling together a smaller collection out of our catalog yeah. and um, and making it you know making something that will really differentiate in the market and so what, what's been happening on that, on that front and I know that last year you just started uh, to look at working with smaller companies and smaller startups so how's that been evolving over the last year it's good it, it's um, for us we're all we always look at um, we always look at different you know different characteristics when a company comes to us and they want to try to license the API and build something with music we you know I always try to understand are they going to scale you know are they going to be able to achieve you know some sort of visibility in the very very new noisy consumer marketplace do they have the money to promote their service can they build a great app yeah. um, and the, the it, when you have these criteria it does start to whittle away at from all the people that want to do things with music versus those that are really set up to be successful on it. And yeah. um, and so we're trying to filter quite a bit and really try to work with a shorter list of companies, whether they're big or small, um, and try to get them into the marketplace and be successful. And there's two in particular that are 
that are going to be coming out in the next six months that we're really excited about that we feel like they're really addressing an unmet music need as opposed now to... You're, now you're teasing me. <laughs> <laughs> I am teasing you a little bit. <laughs> Excellent. But, um, but it, you know, it doesn't make any sense for services that are identical to yeah. to come in and try to compete with Spotify or sure. something. It, that, that, you know, those consumers are probably going to be very well served by Spotify. Yeah. So then who are who are others that, that may not be may as not well be served. served? Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, looking at the international landscape, one of the things that fascinates me the most, and uh, my panel was uh, around that actually, uh, looking at how very different every single market in the world is when it comes to digital adoption, uh, trends, you know, in North America, we're starting to see a leveling and a, a, a beginning of a decline for downloads or as streaming takes hold. But uh, in other territories, downloads are still a relatively new thing. And so the question is, are consumers going to adopt downloads first or leapfrog into streaming so when you're looking at the international scene you know what what's your what's your take and are you seeing countries where downloads are still uh, growing strongly well absolutely and I was just I've just had a couple convers similar conversations on this trip about that that the the patterns of behavior and how people are adopting how consumers are adopting different digital music services it's wildly different and I think I, I did some research on this I think like for example in Sweden which which is a bit of an anomaly, but still a really important mile marker is that 48% of the entire population had tried some streaming service last year, whereas in Japan it was only 3%. And some of that comes down to what kinds of services are allowed to be licensed by the rights holders, what kinds of devices are there, do people have Wi-Fi and connectivity in their homes. Yeah. And, um, so pattern, you know, the patterns are really, really different, and that always poses a challenge for companies that are platform oriented because you want to try to have the same experience in every country around the world. Um, but I, I'm not sure that that's going to play out. It, it certainly at the same, certainly not at the same rate of adoption. Yeah. Yeah, sure, and that that's also, you know, a question mark on the on the cost side because if you have to adapt your platform to every single market, it's just a really expensive enterprise to do. And a lot of companies are launching, you know, multiple territories, but they don't actually have people on the ground there, so it's it's difficult. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's 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 really really challenging, and I think that um, I think that we're you know we're starting to see certain patterns that can be predicted. Say if you know, if the download market is strong, right. then it'll probably take longer for streaming to take hold. If the streaming market is really strong, then you know then it, generally that's going to be a really healthy digital music market. Yeah. I think com I think countries like Japan will be really interesting to watch because Absolutely. because that's been it's been very controlled controlled and very closed in the mobile and it's starting to open up yeah. and um, we're going to have to hope that some of the services that were set up by the big uh, rights owners there don't work out because uh, the reason why they're not licensing catalog right now as far as I understand is because uh, uh, they don't want to they have their own service and they don't want to license their catalog to another service even internally so that's uh, yeah. it's, uh, definitely a difficult a difficult market to work in but uh, it's going to be it's going to open up soon I think and uh, it's going to be quite fun uh, I think it will too and that and that that's exactly what was happening happening here you know maybe eight ten years ago yeah. and and it, it comes down to are you programming and creating something that consumers want or are you programming and creating something that your company wants yeah and I think it's always better to focus on what consumers want and that's usually the ability to get everything it doesn't matter what label it's from yeah exactly and so looking forward to the next 12 months or so you talked about these new couple of services that are coming out anything else that's in the pipelines that you're excited about well we are really excited we I am um, we're we're investing a lot in radio, and right. um, and we, you know, partially it's around the lean back listener experience, and we believe that again there are going to be some algorithms that will help bring music out and help people discover music. Uh, but I think there's also going to be human cur human curation and a little bit more around that traditional lean back radio experience that's that's just really really simple for the casual consumer so there's going to be a lot that we're working on in that in the next year in the product as well as the licensing that's awesome well uh, Vicky it's always a pleasure talking to you yeah and go and check out 7Digital as well uh, of course uh, and uh, see what they're up to uh, thanks so much for your time yeah thank you and thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of South by Southwest you can find everything out on digitalmusictrends.com or on youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends